So here's today's project, the Craftsman Crawler. She's gonna get a little upgrade in the shifter department. This thing's been bugging the crap out of me. This is gonna be the third time I've changed it, but look at that. It's so much play, it's loose, it's hard to select a gear with it. And it's, you know, obviously you can adapt it whatever way you want to. Uh, the way I'm going to do it is actually using this old mower deck hardware. They're a raised lower deck. The raise lower the deck hardware actually. Um, this thing, as you can see, it's you know already built into the tractor. It's, the parts are already there, so it should be a pretty easy conversion. So we're making some progress here. Um, the handle, obviously, but I'll remove this spring-loaded pin because it will serve no useful purpose for shifting my transmission. Um, and this is what it bolts to. It sits just like this inside the tractor. So this whole plate will have to get just cut right off this big steel post that it sits on. And there she is, all cut, ready to go in. Alright, so I got it back together in there. Um, that bottom piece is C-clipped in. This handle is just kind of sitting here for mock-up purposes. It's not bolted in yet. Um, I'm going to need to cut the top of this off to the height that I want it because it sticks up way past the steering wheel. She's cut off, reinstalled. I think that'll work beautifully. The linkage for the front is kind of in place. You can see that little hanging device there. That's going to operate the linkage from the front side. And the linkage from the back, it's kind of hard to see, but right here behind the belt, you can see this is a tie rod end from an MTD garden tractor. And this is my, right here, you can kind of see me wiggling it, my custom shifter support. But yeah, that. I made that so uh, this will clear all of this hardware up here for the skid plate mounting brackets and stuff because it needs to get up above that to shift obviously. And this little MTD steering arm is just so it can achieve a height elevation change because as this thing goes forward and backwards that's going to kind of go up and down a little bit so there's going to be some bending there so that will avoid any binding. Okay, so in order to get enough throw on this thing to be able to shift it all the way from reverse to fourth gear, I had to shave just a little bit of metal right out of here, right basically to that bolt, and grind a little notch in this piece right here, you can see it, um, just to clear that inside of that bolt where it comes out. So now I can pull that back like an extra quarter of an inch, which really translates into an extra, probably another quarter of an inch down there anyways. Um, but now I should have just enough throw to be able to function this transmission completely from reverse to fourth gear. Like I said before, I'm using the end pieces from the uh, MTD steering. And actually, I'm going to use the whole steering shaft since it's all threaded and it's actually shaped. You can see that right there. And that's going to sit in there and set just along that this wall right in here just so it stays out of the way of this belt and I'm going to connect it to this piece with a quick release cotter pin or hitch pin style uh, connection. So right now I got to cut the end of this thing off so I can put a different connection on the end of it. That side's good. It's exactly how I want it. Um, this side's got to go. Alright, well, as you can see, the end is cut off of my linkage, and the other side is now connected to that custom transmission mount. As you can see, it lifts, you can lift the shift point up probably about an inch and a half, two inches, so it'll clear all the uh, skid plate mounting hardware. That combined with this shaped shaft should work really well at clearing all of my stuff underneath. So now I just need to rig up a connection for that side right there. For that, I'm thinking about using this piece right here. I'm going to cut the end off of that, and that'll fit into here like so, and then a pin through that, and then, you know, obviously weld it to my other piece of linkage that connects to the transmission, and that should be good to go. 
All right, so she's tack welded in there, as you can see. Oh, hold on, let me turn this thing off. Last thing you guys want to hear is the fan motor on that thing. But there's my front linkage, tack welded in two spots to the rear, Ooh, the rear linkage right there, and let's function it. See how it works. Right now, technically, that should be in fourth gear. So that's third, second. First, neutral, and reverse. And it has just enough play for reverse right there. You can see. Everything's not 100% bolted down yet, so. We're just mocked up for the most part, but reverse. So neutral should be right there. Then first, second, third, fourth. Which is pretty far forward, but oh well. It'll work. Looks pretty cool, too. I think it'll confuse people, which will make it really awesome. But now I gotta disassemble everything entirely and weld that completely solid. Make sure I have some washers on there to get rid of this little bit of slack right here. I don't want to touch the welded part, but you can see that's moving around quite a bit. So that needs some spacers. And I gotta tighten that back part down. And I gotta put some Loctite on all these little bolt connections because. I don't want anything rattling apart again. I'm done with this. This is it. This is the last linkage for the transmission. She's all welded. Sorry for the ugly welds. I don't use gas. I just flux core. That side's not so pretty. But she'll hold. That definitely won't break. Time to reinstall all this. I'm going to brush it down first on the bench brush. So we got some Loctite. This is uh, Stug Formula. It's actually the wrong stuff for what I'm doing here. I should be using the blue. Um, but I'm just going to use a tiny, tiny bit and it should work all the same. Also got the linkage polished up so the welds look a little bit better. But time to install that. I got some washers. deal with this spacer problem so I've already loctited that connection I'm going to loctite the one that goes to the transmission and that's it all right so we are all reinstalled my hitch pin and washers are on there as you can see that's all welded and that's all working good everything clears all my hardware so the only slack that there is in the whole system as you can see is in the transmission as well like I'm wiggling that just a little bit and slack translates all the way through into the transmission so all my connections are like 100% tight I will say one thing that I wish I didn't do is trim this yet because I just had a really really neat afterthought the idea of this kind of going back and forth is pretty cool but you know there's more of a tendency now to hit this thing because it sticks out pretty far so I sort of wish I left the old button thingy in the top of one of these things and had that little plug there because I'm thinking what would be really cool to do is cover up these welds right here or cover up these notches right here with welds this one and this one right in there and put a new notch right where it's sitting when it gets into neutral. That's reverse, so neutral would be right about there. So if I put a little notch in the metal right there, then in theory, that pin would lock up and lock this whole transmission in neutral and would make it so you wouldn't be able to kick it in a reverse or first gear on accident. Here we go. Notches are all closed up. Now I'm gonna test fit the other handle, figure out where neutral is, and grind a new little neutral notch. Alright, so here you can see is the new shifter. It's got the pin in it. And now what I have to do to get this to all function properly with the, the pin working is I gotta shorten this little rod which sits inside the shifter and operates the pin from the inside, like so. Exact same amount that I shortened the shifter. So I gotta measure that and cut that much off of this thing and re-weld it back together. So while I had it apart, I decided to take the opportunity to replace that little push button with a neat little hex-headed bolt. 
because it's wider than that button. It's kind of more comfortable on your thumb because I'm going to be using it a lot, obviously. But as you can see, it's been reinstalled into the Craftsman. I made the new notch for neutral right there, and that thing actually works perfectly. It catches the shifter, right? As you return, boom. That's neutral. And then you click it down with your hand, like that. And as you can see, now you can go into reverse, back to neutral, first, second, third, fourth. Done and done. I'd say that thing works pretty good. And another cool little feature about this, putting the shifter here on the side, that I didn't really think about beforehand is this little hole in here where all the pulleys are in front of the seat always bothers me because you know obviously there's belts flying around in there so I went ahead and made this little access door this is actually a rear plate from a craftsman um, what this would have had the tow hook part that swoops off and has a little tow hook hole down here I cut that part off and notched it so it would fit this frame and now it sits on a little hinge that actually is a piece of a craftsman's seat mount. And this thing will basically makes the whole thing safer. So you can't get tangled up in those belts. And now actually what I'm thinking is the battery, which was originally supposed to go there, I might move that underneath here just to hide it completely and suspend it kind of midway between all the linkages. But now you can see my linkage down there. And my linkage all the way back on the transmission. There's neutral. And obviously now it's a lot easier to shift it. I mean, before you guys saw me trying to shift into the gears. Now it's like one, two, three. I mean, it's pretty. It's pretty accurate, so it'll be a lot more comfortable and easy to drive this thing. Alright guys, well that's it for me today. There's kind of how to build your own custom Craftsman shifter using almost parts entirely from the Craftsman. Um, I didn't do anything super special here. Uh, you see I used that whole part from the original Craftsman. I welded what was like an old mower deck bolt and notch the frame to accommodate it. That comes down to an old piece of linkage that goes back to the transmission and actually this transmission has been lowered down to effectively lift the rear end. If you didn't uh, lower your transmission or have the skid plate hardware to contend with you wouldn't need to really lift that mount point back there. You could just kind of go flat to it so it'd be even easier. I probably overcomplicated this whole thing so this is probably a really easy process to do but because this Craftsman has been so heavily modified, um, I have to kind of adapt things to work. But there you go, guys. Um, sorry I can't do a test drive video right now because I have absolutely no gas in the gas cans to drive it. But surely there will be a test drive video of this thing soon because I haven't started it up yet this year. So it needs to run. And keep an eye out for that. But thanks for watching. See you guys later.